Ik wil voor allemaal welkom zijn in die kerk vanmorgen. Het is voor mij lekker om voor jullie allemaal te zien. Ik denk dat is bij van ons kinders wat weg is met vakantie, is het zo? So? Oké, okay, so welcome in the church this morning. For all our children that are still here, that's not on leave. Thank you for your presence here. God is good for us as we come into his presence because he loves us dearly and he always invites us into the kindness of his presence. So you've seen our announcements, um, the theme of our service this morning is all about liminal space when we enter into a time of um, new new things uh, when we on a threshold the Afrikaans is this a drumpel tijd of a oorgangs tijd as ons in so tijd is um, gaan ons bykie kyk na Abrahamse lewe so this is the theme this morning and you see all the people on our prayer re request list it's always wonderful that we know that we as a as a small little congregation can pray for so many people and we do it because we always say this this list is never ending and it's not a closed list so anybody can be on this list and we see the names there and we offer all of those people to God and the difficulties that they are going through. That God knows it and that he will protect and guide us. God sal by ons wees, dis wat ons verwag as ons dan ook vir ander mense bid. As het jou verjaarsdag is hierdie week, ons sien daar is een verjaarsdag, Johannes, wat verjaar dat ons... Uh, vir hom sê geluk, en dan ook vir enige iemand anders, wat ons dalk nie op ons lijst sê het nie, mag die Heere vir jou baie sien, met een mooi jaar. So, congratulations on everybody celebrating their birthday. It's always a new beginning, a new year of God's grace. Then our uh, grief share starts this afternoon. We do it in collaboration with, a, uh, with our Anglican neighbors, the St. Augustine Anglican Church, and it starts at 4 o'clock. So it's for anybody who went through loss and grief that you can at attend this. Hierdie grief share program het al vir so baie mense in ons eie gemeente, maar ook in, in in ons omgeving baie beteken, so dit begin vier uur vanmiddag, en ons um, hoop dat mense dit sal bijwoon, want dit is een wonderlijke geleentheid, om een mense eie persoonlijke verlies te verwerk. Dis al afkondigings wat ek onder ons aandag wil bring. Vandag is ook dan nou die Internationale Dag for Seniors. So today it's International Day for the aged, all the older people, all the senior people that we, we say. And um, you know, our senior people, they come a long way in our church also. And there are many of their special hymns and songs that they, they, they treasure to sing. And our commencing hymn is one of that. And it's also inviting you and me, even if you're young and uh, young at heart, you can also appreciate this, these hymns that stood the test of times, that come a long way. So, ons begin, ons aanvangslied, met een lied wat specifiek vir ons bejaarde mense of senior mense baie beteken het dier, dier die jare. En dit is die lied, Gaan my nie voorbij o heiland, Pas me not, my 
my gentle Savior. So let's, while we stay seated, w uh, we pray this together. This is a beautiful prayer that you and I can also say that whatever God wants to bring to us today, make us available and open to hear. Do not pass me by. Our commencing word is a word of praise and adoration for God. Psalm 104. Hierdie prachtige woorde van Psalm 104, waar die Psalm dichter sê, Ek wil die Heere loof, Heere my God, U is baie groot, U is beklee met koninklijke luister. So, dis erkenning van wie die Heere is vir hierdie Psalm dichter. U, u is groot, U is met koninklijke luister, en dit, dit beteken, alle, alles wat de koning verdien, gee, behoort ons vir die Heere te gee. Vers 1, from Psalm 104, says, Let all that I am, praise the Lord. O Lord my God, how great you are. You are robed with 
honor and majesty. So this is a confession that we start our service with. That we say, my God, you are great and you are robed with honor and majesty. And this is the great, unfathomable, wonderful, kind, generous God that calls us into his grace. And this morning again, I have the privilege to be the, the conduit, the, the conduit of God's grace to you. So receive God's grace this morning. Die almachtige God, wat vir jou en vir my lief is, sê in jou met goedheid, met genade, met guns. The Almighty God blesses you and me with grace, and love and kindness. Amen. Amen. So we can use the same words of the psalmist in Psalm 104, how great thou art, when we sing our commencing hymn and praise him, him, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. Let us stand. our children our chance to go with Bornwell and Jesse to the hall that normally goes to the children's church you're welcome to go there for the children's church kans vir ons kinderkerk saam met Bornwell en Jesse
So when our smaller children left, it's time for us for moments of reflection, as we always do on a Sunday morning. You and I know how busy our weeks are. We run around and we try and just cope with everything. And then when we come into church on a Sunday, it's wonderful for us to quiet down. And this is part of our liturgy also that we really connect with God on a personal level. And the scripture that leads us into our contemplation this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 4. So from Hebrews, hoofstuk 4, hoor ons die volgende. Terwijl ons dan nou een groot hoopriester het, wat reeds dier die hemel gegaan het, Jesus, die Seen van God, laat ons vasthou aan die geloof wat ons belei. Die hoopriester wat ons het, is nie een wat geen medeleie met ons swakhede kan heen nie. Hy was immers in elke opzicht, net soos ons, aan alle versoekings onderwerp. Maar hy het nie gesondig nie. Kom ons gaan dan met vrymoedigheid na die genade troon, so dat ons barmhartigheid en genade ontvang en so op die rechte tyd gered kan word. So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do. Yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. So this is the invitation this morning. We've got a high priest. So what did the high priest do? Once a year, according to the Old Testament, the high priest went into the holiest of holiest places. And there he took all the sins of everybody and he offered it to God. And he, he offered it to God for remission, for forgiveness, for grace. So now the invitation comes from the writer of the Hebrews. And he says, we have exactly the same high priest. His name is Jesus. And we can go to him for forgiveness and for hope and for a new beginning. What do you want to bring to this Jesus Christ for forgiveness this morning? What is God, through his Holy Spirit, showing you and me that we have to repent of our sins? If we open our minds, the Holy Spirit will come and show us. Ask for forgiveness, ask for grace, receive mercy, and we can give it to God. So what do you want to ask for grace and forgiveness this morning? Waarvoor wil jy in ek vergifnis en genade ontvang? Dit kan ons vir die Heere vraag. I give you and me chance to come to this high priest Jesus Christ now for forgiveness and for grace. Let us bow our heads in silent prayer.
Amen. an invitation for us to enter into your grace. Thank you for the opportunity we already had to ask for forgiveness and for uh, to, uh, that we could ask for grace to lead us in our lives. And now we are open for your word. We are receptive and we are eager we are open to receive your word and your message for us today. Ons i kinders Heere is nou oop voor u met dankbare harte. Dankie vir die uitnodiging van herstel en vernieuwing en vergifnis en van genade wat ons al reeds en hierdie dienst kon aanvaar en dat ons dit in ons levens kan gaan uitlewe. Nou luister ons, Heere, as u met ons uit u woord met ons praat. Amen. The word of God is from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. These famous words, I think most of us um, have already read 
this scripture reading many times in our lives. Genesis hoofstuk 12, 1 tot 4. Die Heere het vir Abraham gesê, Trek weg uit jou land, weg van jou familie en jou ouwe reis, en ga na die land wat ek jou sal aanwees. Ek sal jou die voorvader maak van een groot nasie. Ek sal jou sien, zodat so jij geëerd zal wees. En voor al en voor ander tot sien zal wees. Ik zal die zien wat jou zien. En die wat jou vervloek, zal ik vervloek. In jou zal al die mensen van die aarde gezien wees. Abraham heeft u weggetrek, zo stier om beveel het, en Lot het saam gegaan. Abraham was 75 jaar oud, toe hij uit Haran weggetrek het. The Lord had said to Abraham, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So, Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. Here ends our scripture reading, and these words become the word for our contemplation this morning on our theme of liminal space, a threshold, trompeltijd of oorgangstijd. Dit is die thema van hierdie gedeelte en dit is die Heerese woord vir jou en vir my. Kan ons dit aanvaar? Amen? Amen. So the calling of Abram is a long term project for the salvation of humanity. And it started when he was 75 years old. And he was in a predicament. Because can you and me imagine the disruption of his calling? The disruption of leaving behind everything and starting on a journey with no certainties. The only certainty he had was a promise from God. And it seems like the story of humankind when we start in Genesis uh, seem to be a story of just being doomed. The creation narrative, you remember Adam and Eve in, in the beginning, they they were dishonest and disruptive and all those things and then it seems like everything is going spiraling downwards for humankind. Then there was the sibling murder between Abel and Cain. Cain and Abel in chapter 4. There was the flood in chapter 6 of Genesis where everybody lost their life. Luckily there was just Noah. And then in Genesis 11, people built a tower of Babel and they wanted to be famous and all those things. But that wasn't the answer yet. And then God comes in grace and he calls Abram, the father of our faith. And he says, go out of, that's literally the word, leave everything behind. 
Can you just imagine? You are 75 years old. You've established your life. You've got all your securities. What do you have? You have your land. You have your family. You have your father's house. And in those days, those were very important. Some of our cultures, it's still important, but modern, modern people don't care about family anymore. Isn't that so? But in, in his case, it was very important. The family was the security. So God says, leave three, three things that, that are the most secure in your life. That is, your land, your family, and your father's house. So, migration and alienation was the theme of his life. So, just think about yourself at the moment. Maybe you also in 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 a space of in between. We call it liminal space. It is something that is not working at this moment, and you and may be called to so to something new, but you don't know what that newness is yet. And that is typical of religious life. Th this is a typical story of everybody's life. You and me, we are more often in liminal space in our lives than in space of security. Isn't that so? We mostly feel in between stuff. But that's a beautiful place to be according to the Bible because then it is a sacred place. And the ba Bible gives us examples of these in between stages in your life. The Bible um, symbolically calls it also a wilderness time or a time in a desert. Remember the children of God in the desert for how many years? 40 years, isn't it? Desert time. Some of our psalmists call it a, a, a pit or a grave. They feel they, 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 they are like they are buried. They, the, their hearts are dead. So maybe you sit here in this church this morning and you think, my heart is also dead. There's no emotion anymore. I don't feel anything. My life is too troublesome for me. And the other thing is, and this is typical of Abraham, a liminal space of traveling, a pilgrimage, an exile. Remember? The history of Israel, always they were in exile. So the journey with God begins with Abraham, and it's a spiritual reorientation. And this is what God wants to invite you and me. When you are in this liminal space, when we are in this space, I think we are in the limin liminal space worldwide. Everything is haywire in the world. We in our country in a liminal space. A lot of countries are. Our neighboring countries, Zimbabwe, everybody. Our City is in a liminal space. Things are not working. And then add you and me, our own personal troubles. So what does God do? He calls Abram away from that to newness. And he is obedient. Three times the word in the Hebrew here is repetitive. Go out. Pull out. You can also translate that word with pull out. Go out. And it's a time of uncertainty. 
thres threshold and liminal space are times for newness. And it's a time of a sacred space. And this is what God is inviting you and me. It, it is a time of uncertainty, but also a time of hope. So why is it hope? Because God gives him a promise. And he says, I will, not what you and I want to achieve. It's not about our strength and our abilities and whatever. It is being connected to God. To say, in this liminal space, in this space that I don't know what, what, what is the next step, I cling to God. I'm open for His promises. And God gives Abram promises. And, and He says, I will make you a father of many. He's 75 years old. His wife, do you think it's possible for a woman of 75 years old to bear a child. No. So can you believe how difficult it must have been for him? But he was obedient. And just in one sentence we read, So Abram left. He took Lot with him. And the Bible says he was 75 years old. And they started the journey of salvation that you and I also share in today. A journey of obedience. Because he took God on his promises. Because God said, I will make you a, a good nation. I will bless you. God even says, those people that built the Tower of Babel, they wanted to be recognized. They wanted to have honor. Now God said to Abram, I will give you honor. I will bless those who bless you. But he does it and he says, Abram, it's not about you. It's about my promise. And it's about the salvation of the whole world. I'm just using you as my instrument. So, it's not about what you and I can achieve in a liminal space, in a threshold time. It's not what you and I can do. It's not about our abilities. It is what God can do. What is God doing? God says, I will. Three times. I will. I will close and protect you. I will guide you. I will make you a big nation. I will bless you. You will be a blessing for other people. It's all from God. Nothing about Abraham. Because salvation is for everyone. So God doesn't give up. God never gives up. When you and I struggle. We must just cling to him. And in obedience. Ask and pray. And ask God what to do. So normally. When we are disorientated. Um, we want to go back to the old things. That's a human nature. We, we want to do more of the same. You know, that's, that's a terminology that the psychologists give us. They say, when you're in trouble, stop doing more of the same. Because what you, what you are doing, is that, that is causing the trouble. So in a liminal space, you and I, get the chance to pause, you know, time out. The soccer players, they have that. And some of the hockey players, and I see the American ice hockey also. The coach is watching how the players are playing. And then when he sees something's wrong, 
He says, time out. Then the ref stops. And then they go back to the coach. Yes, coach, what, what? No, don't do this, don't do that. You know. So liminal space is time out. To pause and to listen to what God is showing us. Then trans, trans um, um, formation happens. It's like a waiting room. And you and I know, especially when you're young, it's difficult to wait, eh? If you have to wait a day or two for a surprise, you can't wait. It's too difficult because you want it now. You know? And when, when we're smaller and kids... When you want a sweetie, you want it now. You know, you go like that. And then you cry. And a lot of us, emotionally and spiritually, are the same. I want the answer now, God. But it's a liminal space of pause and openness. So that God, in his workshop, can work with you and me. And when God works with us in his workshop, everything changes. We become open. We become patient. All the illusions fall away. All the things that we thought were very important in our lives, they become less important. And we realize all the things that we put our hope on, they fall away on the wayside. And the other thing, you know, when we pause and get time out, we get away from circular thinking. I don't know if it's with you as well, but with me. I start to think, and then I start where I start again. It's like just, I'm all around my own, mm, the whole, whole day. So, so that's turning around, turning around. So in a liminal space, when God calls us out of... The, the things that's familiar, we, c we get away from ourselves. We get away from circular thinking, repetitive cycle. This is also what psychologists call a repetitive cycle. I keep on doing the same things in the same way and I expect new things. That will never happen. God calls Abram away from everything into newness. That is the space for transformation. And the best thing is, everything that is false, fall away. Because when we really struggle in life, we cannot pretend anymore. Then we become true people with true dependence on God. Then we come to the stage with it, that we say, God, I don't know. I've tried all my own abilities. I tried all my own wisdom. But only you know. And now I'm open. I'm humbled. And I am in a position to discover the newness that you want to bring to me. It's challenging, but we know the story of Abram. It's rewarding. He got his child. His wi wife got pregnant. And he had a big, big her heritage and family. And today, the New Testament says, when you and I believe we are children of Abram. So because he was obedient and he went into this liminal space this border situation he took God on his promises and he entered into that sacred space by listening to God and being obedient he received the blessings so this is the invitation for me for you for all of us this morning let us embrace liminal space. Let us embrace this in-between times. Let us embrace what God is giving you and me at this moment. 
let us be open and stay connected to God. And God will lead us into new promises. Because we are children of Abram, we are believers in Jesus Christ, we will, we will share in all the blessings that God wants for us personally. Can you and I receive it this morning? Let us walk into this liminal situation, this threshold, this, this in-between times with faith and hope and we keep on believing in God's promises. Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for his word in our lives this morning. Jere, vanmorgen vraag ons met oprechtheid en openheid van u, dat u vir ons sal help om die hoop van u beloftes daaran vast te hou en dat u vir ons sal help om oor ons onzekerheid in ons angstigheid in ons zwaar kry te dink. Daarom bid ons vir hierdie hele wereld wat u geskap het. Ons bid vir elke nasie, elke taal, maar ons bid specifiek vir ons land Ons bid specifiek vir ons dorp, ons stad, Johannesburg. Ons bid vir ons bierlande, Zimbabwe, en ons vraag Heere, ons wat in hier die tussentijd is, help u kinders om aan u beloftes vast te hou en bring vir ons die hoop, bring vir ons die verandering, geef vir ons die weisheid, om as dit oor ons pad kom, dat ons het sal sien, en dat ons daar die rechte kese sal maak. We thank you Lord, that we may know through the life, and the example of Abram, that all challenging times, all liminal times, all times of threshold, can be rewarding because it is a time that you transform us. We give you the right to take away all our false certainties. We give you the right to deconstruct all our egocentricity. Help us to move away from ourselves into the calling that you have for us in this world. Stay with us. We need you. We cannot live without you. We offer ourselves as we sang earlier in this service. We surrender all. You are our God our Father, our hope. Amen. Our closing hymn is that beautiful hymn also because we celebrate especially the Sunday of the, the Aged. That is uh, Internationale Dag for the Seniors. And we sing also one of these lieder liekies waarom jy hulle groot geword het, waarom jy ek en jy ook nou groot word. Leer my, u wil hier, have thine own way, Lord. Leer my, u wil hier, u doel met my, u pot te bakke, For me and mock me, volgens u wil, op u vertrouw ek, nie terug en 
to bless each other. I normally give the blessing, but this morning we do it by singing the peace of our Lord be with you. Vrede van God. En ons sing het vir mekaar toe, dat die Heerse vrede met ons sal wees. We pray that the peace of God and the peace of the Lord will be with you. And we sing it to each other this morning. So, even if you have somebody in mind that you want to send that peace to. We give it to each other here, but you can also think of somebody that you will send, you want to send God's peace to. Let us repeat it twice as we sing the peace of the Lord. Friede von Gott, die Friede von Gott, die Friede von Gott ist mit Jung. Friede von Gott, Friede von Um, die Friede von Gott ist mit of our Lord, the peace of our Lord, the peace of our Lord be with you. Peace of our Lord, peace of our Lord, the peace of our Lord be with you. Friede von Gott, die Friede von Gott, die Friede von Gott ist mit Jung. Friede von Gott, Friede von Um, die Friede von Gott ist mit Jung. Peace of our Lord, the peace of our Lord, the peace of our Lord be with you. Peace of our Lord, <coughs> peace of our Lord, the peace of our Lord. 